the big picture um which i have very interesting films adaptation of a novel by douglas kennedy um which it's it's made considerable changes to the novel it moves the location to the exit of france changes the ending considerably um there have been a couple of really terrific french thrillers in the past sort of four or five years there was the tell no one which is fantastic the film which a man's wife disappears missing believed dead and then she seems to be speaking to him from the ether somehow from the beyond then there was that thing anything for her which was remade as the next three days in which a man's wife is suddenly convicted of uh, of murder and the next thing he knows his family has fallen apart because his wife is behind bars for the foreseeable future what how is he going to, what's he going to do about it and actually one of the things i loved about the original french version of that film as opposed to the remake was it did a pretty good job of that okay this is a, f a popular crime scenario somebody's in prison we've got to break them out but it's but what it's doing is it's saying well, yeah but what if you really did that what if you were an ordinary joe schmo character and you decided to do a prison break well in some ways the big picture has similarities with those. I mean, it's. I don't think it's quite on the scale of Tell No One because I do think that's a wonderful film. But central performance by Raymond Dur Roman Duris, who was brilliant in the beat that my heart skipped. Character the story is that his character is a, is a businessman, and his, the, the character starts to feel aggressively suspicious about his next door neighbour who is a photographer and the businessman used to be a photographer and now he's gone into business he's not doing his photography anymore so he's got a reason to feel jealous of this guy he's also having problems with his marriage and he begins to feel that the next door neighbor is perhaps having some kind of relationship with his wife then inexplicably suddenly and pretty much accidentally a violent event occurs which means that essentially what he has to do is to put his life behind him and run I mean, he has to go. I'm not going to tell you what it is because, I mean, you, you can do the math, but I don't want you to. Because one of the nice things about the film is it's about an ordinary guy in extraordinary circumstances. Something, what sort of extraordinary circumstances? Well, something terrible happens. And if he stays around, very, very bad things will happen. So something terrible happens. It happens unintentionally. And all this sort of broiling tension that he's been wrestling with, his jealousy, his suspicion, I mean, you know, whether these suspicions are justified or not, who knows? Suddenly he's faced with an appalling reality. Something really bad has happened. And the only thing he can do is disappear and cover his traces. And it does that thing that the movies I was speaking of just before also did, which is to go, OK, this is a fame, you know, very popular crime scenario. Something happens, you have to disappear. But actually, if you were just an ordinary bloke, how would you do that? How would you do it? Is well, how would he do it? Well, that's one of the things that the film is about. I also like to say that what I don't want to do is to tell you sections of the plot because one of the great joys of the film was I didn't know where it was going. And there was two or three moments when I thought this it, it's, it's ending here. And, and it didn't. And I was very pleased that it didn't. But partly because I literally, I had no idea where it was going. Because what happens is in the... You ever seen... Um, there's a slow motion film, this is a very bad analysis, but there's a slow motion film, you know if you cut a tennis ball open, inside the tennis ball, you know there's a whole thing about, no not a tennis ball, a ping pong ball, there's that old story that inside yes. a ping pong ball is the most poisonous substance known to mankind, it's not true, what there actually is, is, is all scrunched up rubber, okay? You mean a golf ball? I mean a golf ball. A ping of course, pong ball. Ping pong ball's got air inside got air it. In it. Yes. Thank you. I'm okay. not sporting, so as you can tell. So let's start again. So the golf ball. Okay. Right. Cut it. Open. You know, inside a golf ball, poison if you cut it open, the story is that it's poison. It's, it's not. It's rubber. Okay. Fine. There is a piece of footage that somebody shot with a very high def camera of shattering a golf ball and all the rubber inside springing out. You know that the thing. Yes. One of the things that this film does beautifully is that idea of something unraveling, something with the, the tendrils of it going in places that you don't expect at all. And at the centre of it all is a guy who, partly I think because Roman Juris is such a fantastic actor, and partly because the idea is so simple and yet so complicated. At every single turn, where does he go from here? How does he go? Where, does, he get, does he do that? Does he do that? Can he cover it? Some people have said, in order to like the movie, you have to allow it to have the kind of plot holes that you could drive a truck through. Um, and although in retrospect it may be possible to criticise it for that, I actually thought whilst I was watching it that it covered its tracks pretty well and every single thing he does to avoid detection only lasts for a short period of time. And actually the, the real pleasure of the film was it had a kinetic energy to it, which was that you did genuinely believe that this stuff was unravelling in something approaching real time. It's not a masterpiece and it, it is probably one of those films that, it, that the more you think about it, the more you start to go, hang about a minute, hang on, that doesn't quite work and that doesn't quite work. But whilst I was watching it, I was gripped. I thought the performance was terrific. There's a, a, a kind of a, a small role, a Catherine Deneuve role, which is, you know, and Catherine Deneuve, hey, 
Catherine de- et prends en temps Catherine Deneuve you know she, she comes up for a couple it's of and scenes. Jennifer Aniston in Horrible Bosses it is and Jennifer Why Aniston isn't be? it I, yeah I know it's weird that the the exact what does that mean do you does it mean you're it, it means she's down no it means she's higher she, up it means you're higher up it means that you're too famous for the film really really Kevin Spacey but he's got a lead yeah well why isn't it and Kevin Spacey and Colin Farrell yeah I don't know anyway. I mean anyway but it is an and Catherine Deneuve thing but honestly a big picture good ripping fast moving pacey thriller which does that thing that a couple of french thrillers in the past few years have done which is you know ordinary man extraordinary circumstances how does it play out and i i really enjoyed it very much